properties that I specified for expectation value functions, and therefore that it specifies a possible state. So, what does this tell us about what's happening to our qubit? Well, what's happening to its observable z? Well, the expectation value of z is minus 1. So, for instance, if we repeated the whole experiment many times, repeated it including the initial preparation and everything, then the average value of all the outcomes would be minus 1. Okay, but look at the spectrum of z. It only contains the values minus 1 and 1, so each individual outcome must be one of those two values. And so, if the average over many outcomes is minus 1, it follows that every single outcome must, in fact, be minus 1. Therefore, in this case, we don't have to bother with repeating the experiment many times. We don't have to set up an ensemble of identically prepared copies of the system. We don't have to worry about what's happening in other universes. Quantum theory predicts that the outcome of a measurement of z will be minus 1. In a given state, when an observable has this property, that if it were measured, the same outcome would occur in all universes, then the observable is said to be sharp in that state. Now, let's think about measuring a different observable of this same qubit at time zero. Let's say this one. So, we can read off the expectation value. It's the top left corner. The expectation value of x is 0. So, if we make many copies of this experiment, measuring x, the average value of the outcome will be 0. Same with repeating it many times. Same is true of the average value over all the universes in which x is measured. No particular outcome will be zero, though. That's because, as you can verify in the worked examples, the eigenvalues of x are also plus and minus one. So each outcome will be either plus one or minus one. And if their average is going to tend to zero, well, you can see that half of them are going to have to be plus one and the other half minus one in the long run. And this translates to a probabilistic prediction the probability of each of these two outcomes is one half. So, the observable x is not sharp. In fact, it's as far from being sharp in this state as a Boolean observable can get. Z was sharp, x isn't. And that's no accident. There's a principle of quantum mechanics called, rather misleadingly, the uncertainty principle which says that not all the observables of a system at a given instant can be sharp. If some of them are, others will not be. You can prove this for yourself from the properties of expectation values. Again, see the worked examples. Heisenberg introduced a quantitative version of this principle, which is named after him, the Heisenberg Uncertainty Principle. In this lecture, You've seen how quantum systems are described in terms of observables, which are matrices, and states, which are real-valued functions of matrices. And in particular, you've seen the simplest type of quantum system, the qubit, described in that way. I hope you're beginning to see that a qubit is a seriously weird thing. I haven't even discussed any actual experiments yet or tell you about any phenomena by which quantum theory is tested and which provide quantum computation with its power. But suppose the theory is true. Here we have an entity, the qubit, that's literally not of this universe. If we try to pin it down, if we prepare it carefully so that a particular Boolean observable is sharp, and has the same value in all the universes in which we measure it, then other observables of the same qubit cease to be sharp. 
There's no way we can make the qubit as a whole homogeneous across universes. It's an unequivocally multiversal object. Every Boolean observable is part of a qubit, and every question of whether something measurable is so or not is in reality a Boolean observable. And therefore, the complete answer to such a question is not in reality just one of those yes-no values, not even both of them in parallel, but a quantum observable, something that can be represented as a matrix. Even as you measure one of those observables and perceive one of those eigenvalues as the outcome, the other outcomes are generically also present in the wider reality and are affecting each other. What we perceive to some degree of approximation as a world of single-valued variables is actually something much larger and richer, corresponding to a great algebra in which there's a matrix whenever we perceive a variable. Yet, despite this rich structure, there's an overall unity and simplicity to the quantum world. The complete description of the essence of a physical system reduces to its characteristic algebra. The complete specification of what the system is doing across the multiverse and over time is a certain function defined on the elements of that algebra. It's a beautiful theory, but more to the point, it's how the world is. You and I are collections of not just particles at particular positions at each instant, but of matrices, walking around, performing measurements, perceiving the world and ourselves. You may not want to be a bunch of matrices. I quite like the idea. But either way, we have no choice. If we want to understand the physical world at the deepest level currently known to human beings, it has to be via quantum theory. I hope you want to do that, and I hope you'll join me in the subsequent lectures of this series.